Hey guys, and welcome to my Professor Putri side guide. My guide videos are not going to be super long videos as I'm making these videos the way I would like to watch a video guide, which is like three to five minutes, uh, depending on the boss, of course. Explain the mechanics and give me a good strategy to use for the boss. So if that's what you're looking for, you come to the right place. All strategies in my guide videos will be the strategies my guild used during the world first progression in Classic. Professor Putricide requires a little bit more explanation as there's a lot more mechanics than the bosses prior to him um, if you go straight to him right after Saofeng. Professor Putricide has uh, three phases and two intermissions. Phase 1 is 100 to 80%, Phase 2 is 80 to 35% and Phase 3 is 35% until he's dead. The king of phase 1 and 2 in this fight, as you will be able to see in the footage rolling in the background, is the off tank controlling the mutated abomination. He will be topping DPS and it will not even be close with the strategy that we use. We use the off tank as basically as a damage dealer on this boss fight. The mutated abomination controller needs to make sure he has enough energy to slow the oozes that spawn and to instantly apply the armor debuff other than that. You're just whacking away on, on the oozes and on the boss. Starting from 10 seconds into the fight, and after that every 30 seconds, Putricide will throw two slime puddles at two random players, creating a growing ooze at the location. This ooze is absorbed by the mutated abomination that we just talked about. On pull, we usually stack up at the table or to the left of the table to bait the stacks right here. Before the boss is moved under the green valve, ready for the first volatile ooze to spawn. About 25 seconds into the fight, Putricide will spawn his first volatile experiment, and it will always be the volatile ooze first. By having the boss where the green slime spawns, all melee players will instantly be able to damage it when it spawns to kill it even faster. The Volatile Ooze will fixate on a target and root it in place and start moving to the target. When it reaches its target, it will explode and deal roughly 250,000 damage to surrounding enemies. This damage is split among every single raid member hit by it. You cannot slow the Ooze, only the Mutated Abomination can do this. Warlocks can pre-place a portal to extend the duration of when it will hit a player, all Warlocks should have a portal in the same position, so when it targets a Warlock, everyone in the raid knows where to go when the Warlock uses the portal. Putricide will also cast Unbound Plague, an ability that increases your damage taken from it the longer you have it, and it jumps to nearby players. How we handle this debuff is to Soulstone a designated player, we use our Resto Druid, rest in peace brother, and have him take the plague out and go die alone. We cycle through all our soul stones like this. After the green slime has been killed, you can push the boss below 80% HP to start the first intermission. During the intermission, Putricide will go to the table and spawn two volatile experiments, one green ooze and one orange ooze. The orange ooze is called gas cloud, and similar to the green ooze, it will fixate onto a target However, it will not root it, but if it reaches its target, it will instantly kill it. If you don't kill the gas cloud in time, it will fixate onto a new target and repeat the process. When it is changing its fixate target, it is important to not be near it to not instantly get one shot. During this intermission, the off tank will be slowing and depiercing the oozes with the abomination, and the entire raid will receive a debuff either called ooze variable, or gas variable. If you have ooze variable, you can only deal damage to the green ooze and you have gas variable, you can only deal damage to the gas cloud. If you are kiting the gas cloud, try to not kite it to the opposite side of the room, but rather keep it near the raid for more damage uptime and killing it faster. After 45 seconds, phase 2 will start. If you pushed him before the second slime spawn in phase 1, the first ad that spawned now will always be a gas cloud. We are put aside positioned on the green valve when the gas cloud spawns, so no one is close to it to instantly get one shot. And then whoever gets fixated by the gas cloud kites it through Putricide 
so all the melee can naturally switch to it and burst it down ASAP. In phase 2, he gains two new abilities, Malleable Goo, which is the same ability as on Fessagot, and Choking Gas Bombs. How we handle the Malleable Goo is to have the range stacked together in one stack, and then move either left or right on every Malleable Goo depending on the situation. Moving as one group re reduces the chances of a guy randomly walking into a Malleable Goo. For the Choking Gas Bombs, the tank just moved put aside away from them when they spawn. And that's pretty much it for phase 2. At 35% you encounter your second intermission, which is a repeat of the first intermission. When phase 3 starts, you are on a DPS check timer. To kill the boss before either the entire room is covered in green slime, or your raid just takes too much damage and you die. In phase 3, the Abomination will disappear and no longer be available to the raid. Putricide will still cast the green slime puddles, gas bombs and malleable goo. For this phase, we yet again have the entire range camp stacked together to bait the malleable goo in one spot and all the green slime in one spot as well. In phase 3, Professor Putricide will now also apply a debuff to the tanks every 10 seconds called Mutated Plague. The Mutated Plague deals damage to the entire raid every 3 seconds and the damage is multiplied by 3 for every stack you have. How we handle this debuff in the last phase is our main tank takes 1 stack. Second stack that happens we have one of our DKs get handed protection by a Holy Pala and then he taunts the debuff so the main tank does not get a stack. After that our off tank who was in the Abomination taunts the boss and tanks until two stacks. Third stacks that would happen on the off tank is once again taunted by a DPS player, in our case the DPS warrior with a hand of protection. After this we have either main tank or off tank take it until the boss dies. If you don't have great DPS you might need more DPS players to help out with a taunt, but I hope you found the video useful and uh, best of luck with the fight in uh, Icecrown Citadel.